We now recognize we have a duty to protect the oceans. We must also accept that we have a duty to protect the wider cosmos. We have to curb our belief that the space above us is so vast that we can allow what is out of sight to be out of mind. We must develop a sustainable way, a durable way of benefiting from space, just as we must here on the Earth. That which is out of sight is out of mind, according to King Charles III. Incidentally, this also applies to religion. Now back to space. Since the beginning of space travel, 1957, there are about 13,600 satellites in space. We know these images. Rush hour in German cities. And so does rush hour look like in the universe. However, there's uninterrupted rush hour. A colorful mixture of active satellite systems and discarded objects. Space junk. We know what happens to discarded objects. They end up in the South Pacific in the space graveyard known as Point Nemo. Point Nemo is the farthest place on Earth from the mainland. There are already over 3,000 spaceships and associated space debris laying there. But what about the satellites currently orbiting in space, about 6,000 of them? Recently an open working group met at the United Nations in Geneva with the aim of achieving responsible behavior in space. The permanent representative of the Holy See to the UN in Geneva participated. Are there space traffic rules? Why does the Vatican participate in such UN meetings? And because we are in space, what does our Holy Catholic Church actually say about extraterrestrials, the little green men? We speak now with Archbishop Nbachukwu about the dangerous rush hour in space, here at EWTN TV UN Block. Good day. The rate at which the number of satellites in Earth orbit is increasing has more than doubled in the last 10 years. By 2022, an average of about 170 satellites per month would be launched into space. To prevent chaos, space traffic disruptions and accidents or illegal use, the United Nations had already introduced the so-called Outer Space Treaty in 1967. As a permanent observer at the United Nations and actively involved in discussions, the Holy See recently expressed its growing concern that, I quote, as space becomes economically profitable and strategically important, it may become both a theater and a means of conflict. Legal instruments would have to be urgently adapted, guided by the UN Charter and the Outer Space Treaty. I now welcome in Geneva the Holy See representative, His Excellency Archbishop Fortunatus in Bacupu. Good afternoon, Excellency. Good afternoon, Christian, and uh, thank you for having me. You recently participated in a United Nations working group in Geneva called Open Working Group on Reducing Threats in Outer Space through Norms, Rules and Principles of Responsible Conduct. Sounds to me like uh, Captain Kirk's instructions to the crew of Starship Enterprise. Thank you, Christian. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in 1967, we had the Outer Space Treaty, and that was after the Russians and then the Americans made their entrance into the outer space. And so it became necessary to uh, try to regulate uh, the use, uh, the presence of humans in the outer space. Uh, to avoid a free-for-all enterprise. Uh, and in doing that, effort was made to build 
on existing instruments, um, legal instruments, uh, especially the, human, the United Nations Charter, uh, and then also um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the creation of this same um, uh, treaty. Uh, they have become um, instruments that have been used in trying to make sure that the outer space enterprise is not turned against the good, as I mentioned uh, in all the interviews, that the Holy See pursues the question of common good. So um, we are involved in these conferences to make sure uh, that the states are reminded that whatever use is made of the outer space is not going to be against, but should be in favor of seeking the common good. In your presentation to the UN in Geneva, you said that the need for rules to regulate space traffic, in particular, was urgent. I play the adversary's advocate. Don't we have enough problems regulating our terrestrial traffic to begin with? Well, um, first and foremost, you have to think of the importance of the outer space. Um, the outer space is very much used today. You think only of the satellites and the use of the satellites, um, and the number of satellites that have been sent into the outer space in our times has grown enormously. And uh, we have to be careful that these satellites do not begin to collide with one another and get destroyed. And you know that we have been using these satellites. Think only of the uh, uh, global uh, positioning system, the GPS, its use in controlling traffic here. Think of air traffic, think of sea traffic, think also of land traffic. Just imagine what would happen if we did not have any means of controlling air traffic with the number of airplanes taking off, flying across the skies. All of them use the satellites and then um, these satellites are in the outer space. Then you think also of um, now we have even private companies sending their own satellites into the outer space. Think of um, people trying to militarize the um, satellites or other weapons that go to the outer space to maybe try to destroy the enemy satellites as an act of war. And that has led to the development also or, or, or at least the planning to develop by certain uh, states um, anti-satellite missiles. And then you have the, when satellites which have a limited uh, lifespan, they destroy themselves and, to, and so turn into debris. And as hundreds of satellites destroy themselves, the outer space becomes filled with debris. And therefore, it is necessary to um, try to reach some norms and some legal instruments that will guide the use of this outer space, that will guide the traffic of these satellites and other instruments in the outer space to avoid the mistakes we have here on Earth with regard to traffics. So yes, the regulation of traffic in the outer space is very important. According to Statista, mid-2022, there are about 6,000 satellites in space, dominated by the US, followed by China with 541 and Russia with 172 satellites. The Archbishop mentioned that also the private companies sent their own satellites into space. It is mainly such large-scale projects that continue to rapidly increase the number of satellites in orbit. The Starlink satellite network, which belongs to the billionaire Elon Musk, possesses meanwhile approximately 2,400 satellites. By 2027, Starlink satellite network is expected to grow to about 30,000 satellites. Your Excellency, you have expressed the Holy See's concern about increasing orbital congestion, space debris and cyber warfare. 
an advocate a commitment to ban all categories of weapons in space. Do you think that even if there was such a legal binding instrument, the superpowers would agree, let alone abide by it? Well, Christian, I have to tell you that it is even to the benefit, to the interest of these um, superpowers that we get some, um, some uh, normative, in fact, some legally binding instrument to bring in some bit of checks and balances uh, to avoid the mistakes we made here regarding arms race. Um, because uh, nobody, nobody, if we have, for example, atomic bombs being placed in this outer space and they explode, the, uh, uh, the effect of such bombs or uh, very uh, lethal weapons will be indiscriminate and no one is going to be spared and no one is going to be left unscathed. And so we have to be uh, very careful about arms race in the outer space because there um, we may find ourselves repeating the mistakes that have been made here on earth with regard to arms race, mistakes that have led us to the creation of certain instruments. Well, regarding the compliance or non-compliance of states with these instruments, um, there isn't much we can do because even the existing instruments, states, not all states, comply. But that does not um, minimize the importance of these instruments. There is need to create the instruments and there is need for some people to be present, to keep reminding states of their commitments, of their obligation to respect their commitments. And that is why the Holy See is usually present in these um, fora. Um, the Holy See does not have directly any military um, interest. We have maybe the smallest army in the world, the Swiss Guards and um, we don't go to war anymore against anybody. We don't even have, strictly speaking, any commercial interest. Our interests are just three, protecting and defending human life, protecting and defending human dignity, and seeking, defending, and protecting the common good. And wherever these three elements are involved, we, you will find the Holy See being interested as a kind of um, conscience or as a kind of somebody or element to prick the conscience of the bigger and the strong nations. Because let us not forget, whether we like it or not, the big and strong nations are also led, led by human beings. Even though sometimes they might uh, decide to behave like people without conscience, that is being against nature. It is acting against nature. They are human beings. And deep down, each of them, they have got consciences. And the Holy See is there to try to awaken their consciences to their responsibilities, to their commitments. How many of our dear viewers can remember these words? I'll summarize. Space, the final frontier. These are the adventures of the Starship Enterprise, with which its 400 men crew travels for five years to explore new worlds, new life and new civilizations. Many light years from Earth, the Enterprise penetrates galaxies never seen before by man. Your Excellency, I think you have convincingly demonstrated the need to regulate space traffic. Um, and uh, since we are now in space, from a Catholic point of view, and because you are also a biblical scholar, and in the context of space in general, did Almighty God perhaps also create little green men, aliens, ETs in distant galaxies? Thank you, Christian. That is a, an interesting one. But I just have to tell you, that our faith as Christians and as Catholics is based on revelation. And 
that revelation is what we have in the Holy Scriptures. And also we have it through tradition communicated to us. That revelation has been a process. And according to us, in Jesus, we have the fullment, the, uh, the, the, the plenitude, um, the culmination of that revelation. Because as we read in the gospel according to John, um, chapter 1, verse 18, we read, God, no one has ever seen him except the only begotten Son of God who is in the mind of God. He has revealed God. So Jesus is the revelation. The revelation has been complete in Jesus, but our human discovery of that revelation is work in progress. Even after 2,000 years, we are still in the process of interpreting and exposing the revelation that is fully brought to us in Jesus Christ. With regard to your specific question, regarding whether we have other beings outside um, our uh, space here, I will tell you, who knows? In Jesus Christ, we are going to find out in the course of time. After all, you remember that text of um, Jesus Christ when he was talking himself, about himself as a good shepherd in John chapter 10. In verse 16, specifically in verse 16, he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this flock, and I also have to shepherd them. What does he mean? Does he mean that he has got some green beings in other um, heavenly bodies? Well, we do not know. Does Jesus mean that we have got, uh, was he referring to human beings here only? Mo maybe, most likely. But as I said, the um, extent of the revelation of God in Jesus Christ is something is for us, um, something that we have to continuously discover, interpret the discovery and explanation of the meaning of the revelation of God in Jesus Christ is for us work in progress. Pope Francis 2014 Pope Francis said in 2014, for example, if an expedition of Martians came to us tomorrow and one said, I want to be baptized, what would happen? To clarify that he was really talking about aliens, the Pope said, Martians, right, green, with long noses and big ears, like in children's drawings. He would be willing to baptize aliens if they came to the Vatican, asking, who are we to close the doors to anyone? even Martians. That was an excerpt from the Pope's 2014 homily dedicated to the concepts of acceptance and inclusion. Thank you for watching and God bless.